Hello, my name is Brian McLean, journalist for Yahoo Finance, and uh, welcome to this panel for Coin Market Caps, the Capital Conference. And today we'll discuss the potentials of liquid staking. So, a little preamble here. In the face of limitations surrounding both self staking and exchange staking, liquid staking comes as an innovative alternative to sidestep risks associated with illiquidity, complexity, and centralization. In this panel, we will discuss the current status of liquid staking in the industry and what role it can play in the future. So today I am joined by panelists Amitij Gajala. I think I've said, if I get the names wrong, just you, said it. you said it I right. You, to, oh, bro. Just to simplify, you can make it Amit. Oh, Amit. Okay, so Amit is the CEO and co-founder of Stutter Labs. And I think we're also joined by Kelvin Lamb, project lead at Athos Finance and Linear Finance. If you say hello, Kelvin. Hey, guys. Cool. Nice being here. Uh, great. Great to see you. And also, we may have Torab Torabi, head of partnerships at VD at Marinade Finance. Do we have, has Torab come on? No. Okay. Well, anyway. Let's actually just get started. Okay, so we've got half an hour and then we'll have time for a Q&A at the end and uh, that will be coming in through our social media platforms. So I would actually like to turn to Kelvin first. And um, Kelvin, if you could just, it's really simple just to lay the groundwork for the audience here. What do we mean by the terms liquid and staking? And then if you join those both together, we get liquid staking. And what does that mean yeah. also? Very, very basics, but like if you could just sort of sum that up and then we'll get started. Sure. Like for me, right, for liquid, right, essentially I think it means like liquidity of an asset, right? Basically the ability for you to move it around, to use it for different purposes, right? Whether you use it you know, on different on a protocol, uh, you're buying it, selling, etc. Right? Being able to, you know, do it in a quick speed, right? That's the liquidity of, of an asset, right? And in terms of staking, right, what it means is that basically lock up tokens for period of time, right, in order to participate in running the, the chain or maintaining security, right, and it's changed, you earn rewards for that, right? So usually for staking, right, we're required to lock up a certain amount of tokens, right, or, you know, lock, or, or at least over a certain amount of time, right? So that's how, that, that's how staking works, right? But then the, and the, the way it works is liquid staking, right? It actually gets the, both, the best of both, work, both worlds, right? Basically, you get a liquidity of an asset, at the same time, you get the rewards from staking, right? Usually the way I think it works is that you, know, you provide a staking token to a liquid staking contract, right? So the contract will stake your tokens, will validate it on your behalf. And then in return, right, you get a deriv derivative token that actually represents your staking token, right? So that actually bypasses a lot of constraints right, in terms of the liquidity, illiquidity, uh, immovability, and the inaccessibility of the tokens, right? And then with the derivative token, you actually use it out of DeFi protocols, right? For example, you use it for borrowing, lending, you provide liquidity, you know, trading, etc. Right, and and later on you can use your derivative token to actually redeem your staking tokens. Right, so that's essentially I think uh, some of what liquidity staking is. Liquid staking is. Oh, that's that's a really good sum up actually. And actually, if I turn to Amit now, and uh, Amit, Kelvin just said there that liquid staking gives us the best of both worlds. You know, we've got the ability to stake but we can withdraw at any time because you have this derivative token that's attached. Um, Amit, do you think this is a little bit too good to be true? No, it's not. There are billions of dollars that are already staked in liquid staking pools, including the likes of Lido, Marinade, Stater, and uh, even some uh, few millions in Linear as well. So it's not too good to be true. It's it's actually live and a lot, uh, lot of protocols are already utilizing liquid staking. It's a burgeoning industry, which has already become quite big. All right, okay. So can you can you tell us then why this is an innovative step, you know, compared to self-staking and exchange staking? And you've said that it's kind of booming at the moment. So you know, what value does this give the investor? Yeah, so uh, when you typically stake your uh, proof of stake tokens, or for that matter, any type of protocol tokens, your uh, native token is locked. Hey, though it is interest bearing, but uh, you, your capital is pretty much locked, right? You can't use it elsewhere, but you own the asset. You can do a bunch of things with that asset, like taking out loans or participating in 
for in financial products like derivatives options or futures or multiple other things right or providing liquidity in an automated market maker or collateralizing it for something else so this is a capital efficient way of staking is how i would put it okay and um, would you suggest that uh, if i staked in a normal uh, situation maybe through self staking and i can't withdraw at any time what kind of time period are we saying that our tokens are locked into that pool if it is self staking situation yeah uh so it is actually uh so it depends on the blockchain for example on eth uh you can't withdraw the ethereum that is staked till eth 2.0 goes live but on the other blockchains that are uh, slightly younger like solana or for that matter any of the cosmos/tenement based blockchains the time period is within like a few days to a weeks a few weeks on solana it's about 3 days on uh, tenement based based blockchains it's about 21 days while on polygon it's about 2 to 3 days okay okay so but the alternative is to use liquid staking and you said that that to- token will hold its peg one to one with the original cryptocurrency that has been staked is that what i be right in saying that uh so there are even the liquid staking has evolved the designs have evolved initially uh, the design was a one to one peg while the volume of the liquid staking token was increasing day by day but people have innovated uh and one of the one of the most popular models of late is a token that increases in price compared to the native token so let's say for example at the genesis a liquid staked sol is equal to sol right let's say solana staking rewards a 10% per annum so at the end of one year your liquid staked solana or sol will be 1.1 times the native sol so it actually increases in price so this is a model that has become very uh common place uh here over the last few months okay could could you sort of explain to the audience how that new innovation works in layman's terms yeah absolutely uh so think of it like a think of it like a bond right uh so you you pay somebody 100 dollars and every month you're going to get interest so the price of the bond increases and then at the end of the year the bond so at the maturity you will probably get if the interest rate is 10% at the end of one year uh if you had invested $1000 in the bond on day 1 at the end of 365 days you will get $1000 and 100 $1100 right so at any point of time the bond price increases as interest is accumulated so if you take uh, if you try to sell the bond middle of the year you'll probably get $1050 and if you hold the bond till the end of the year you'll probably get $1100 okay okay so uh if we go back amit to you are the ceo and co-founder of starter labs can you just describe what you guys do you know what kind of tokens you can stake what kind of yields you get for staking those tokens what blockchains you operate on yeah so uh before the terra fiasco we were operating on about four blockchains uh at the height of crypto market had over a billion dollars of total value of assets staked on our platform uh beyond terra we also are live on phantom polygon and hedera hashgraph going to support uh, two more blockchains pretty soon uh yeah so these are the four assets currently or three assets currently users can stake on our platform po matic phantom and uh, hbar okay uh so can you describe some of the uh the difference between liquid staking and say for instance yield farming what what is the difference here gotcha uh so yield farming is a general terminology that is utilized or that is used in the case of any kind of yield generation mechanism right uh so let's say for example there are several types of yield farming you provide a liquidity you provide liquidity on an automated market maker 
it's kind of yield farming or you provide you 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 provide ethereum on say an aave or a compound that's lending and it's and then you probably uh provide two sided pool on uniswap or you provide uh, uh assets on yearn finance uh and subscribe to one of the strategies on yearn finance that's kind of called yield farming is a generic word used in defi but liquid staking is a word that is more or less used in the case of proof of stake staking on proof of stake networks where you you stake your native tokens and get a synthetic asset which is a representation of the native staked asset great that's this really solid explanation now actually i think torab has just joined us torab if you want to just say hi Yeah, hey everyone. I apologize for being late. We're actually um I'm I'm head of partnerships at Marinade as you can see from the shirt and we're at our offsite in Italy. Uh and we surprisingly have good Wi-Fi. It was just getting here, so I apologize for being late. No problem. So Tor, you're head of partnerships and BD at Marinade Finance, and we're just asking people basically to explain what their protocol does and mm-hmm. uh what you think is the big innovation of liquid staking and why you think that it's going to be have a lot of potential for the market. Yeah, so obviously there's proof of work which is what Bitcoin and Ethereum currently are and obviously Ethereum is moving towards proof of stake. And so what we do is we provide liquid staking uh for Solana. So in a nutshell what it does is it allows you to have a productive asset, right? So instead of your soul sitting idly, you can stake it. but you don't need liquid staking for that you can do that with a validator but what we do is we allow you to be liquid and that gives you two main advantages number one you can trade in and out without having to wait for the cool down period so on solana it's like 3 days it's an epoch so you, if you want to unstake it would take about 3 days so you have instant liquidity and then secondly your productive asset can be even more productive by participating in defi so you can borrow against it you can do covered vaults like all these different innovations in defi it allows you to basically leverage your money in a way that um is suitable to your needs so if you want to borrow against it, like i said or leverage whatever you want to do you can do all of that and still earn uh 6 to 7% on your soul. So, in a nutshell, that's what Marinade does. Okay, very it's that's interesting. Now, uh Solana is obviously proof of stake consensus mechanism. What percentage do we have of Solana that is staked in the normal way with, you know, self staking? And what percentage has, you know, turned to this new mechanism of um liquidity staking? Do you have any data on that? I do I haven't so um we had data before the huge um the Terra meltdown which caused the nuclear meltdown of the entire crypto market so that changed a lot of it for Marinade specifically we had a little under 2% of total st- soul staked with us and we're the market leader so I would venture to say it's somewhere around like 6% uh, of liquid staking uh and a lot of it is actually staked with validators but part of the reason why is because a lot of the holders of soul have locked soul so you know they have like vesting period where it becomes free soul where they can participate and so that's by design because if you could stake your locked soul i mean if you can get liquid staking that circumvents the entire point of it which is not to create a bunch of selling pressure okay okay so you know it's 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 relatively small the the percentage these days but you would say it's growing as the word gets out there Yeah, I think the two main reasons there's a few reasons why number one is uh, on Solana at least there's a big NFT uh community and so if people were able to earn their like have a liquid staking token that can also use use for mint that would be really strong uh that'd be strong a reason for people to have M soul instead of soul so we're working on that with NFT marketplaces and uh launchpads And then secondly there's like this whole tax issue of if I stake whether it be ETH or STE or SOL for MSOL will Uncle Sam or Uncle wherever country you're from come after you and try to you know make it a taxable event. So I think once those kind of get figured out people will feel much there'd be no reason for people not to use liquid staking. Except okay. for I guess the smart contract risk. Okay, so just to get this clear uh people would fear unstaking their staked assets because that's a taxable event so instead of doing that they want to u- utilize uh a synthetic token that's pegged to their staked asset 
Well, the opposite. Okay, so if someone stakes their soul with a validator directly and doesn't receive a liquid token, that is not a taxable event. But if they stake their soul for M soul, the the synthetic liquid uh, asset, it would potentially be taxable. So it depends how aggressive your tax accountant is. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, yeah. le let's just bring in Kelvin here. Hi, Kelvin. Kelvin. Yep. Uh, so we're, we're we're talking about like we're staking. You know, the difference between self-staking and liquid staking is that, you know, you've got, you can utilize the, the asset. You've got a synthetic asset that's pegged one-to-one -one with mm. your original cryptocurrency that is staked. Now, are there any risks associated with this? Like, are there any risks of that synthetic asset losing its peg to the original cryptocurrency that's staked? I think there's always risk, right? With every investment that you make, right? I mean, some of the risks that you can, I can think of, right? Smart contract risk, right? Potentially, right? I mean... There could be a box of vulnerabilities, right? Where you know, the product could be compromised, right? And sometimes, you know, uh, even then, right, you might not have, you know, any asset that's lost from a contract, right? But then, you know, I think at the end, they trust also plays an important role, right? I think people would think about, okay, if I put certain amount of assets in there, right, and then I return again synthetic, right, will I be able to get my return, right? And let's say six months or one year's time, right? So that's something that uh, uh, people would think about, right? So then when there's when the trust is there, right, then people will be comfortably trading in and out between a synthetic and the real token, right? But then when, let's say, uh, people have doubt in, in potentially the contract, the, the product itself, right, then, then, I mean, then people will be one way, they hope, like there's a chance that people will be you know, move, trying to get the, get off from the synthetic, right, to go in the real token, right? And that's where you know, the pack could be under a bit of pressure, right? So I think, it, uh, yeah, I think a lot of it will depend on trust. Uh, okay, yeah. so you got a, a trust aspect. Kelvin, before we actually go on, because you haven't actually introduced what um, you're the lead at Athos Finance and Linear mm -hmm. Finance, can you just explain yeah. what you guys do? That would be absolutely excellent. Um, sure. So, yeah. So, so basically, Athos and Linear, right? Uh, we're both uh, decentralized data one asset protocols, right? So, well, Linear Finance is really live on Ethereum and BSC. Uh, Athos is going to launch on Polkadot, right? Actually, by Moonbeam soon. So the way it works, right, is that use, user can stick collaterals such as you know, native our native tokens, and eventually we're going uh, multi-collateral as well. You can stick, you know, uh, rep BTC, rep ETH, right? To actually build stable coin, right, at a over collateral mm -hmm. or price uh, ratio, right? That you can you know use to enter long and short positions right, of different synthetic assets, right? So these mm -hmm. assets, these synthetic assets, will actually track performances of another asset, right? That you know could be. Uh, within cryptocurrency itself, right, or it could be unrelated as well. It could be something like commodities, right? So by building a stable coin, uh, you also become a part of that pool, right, in our, in our protocol, which act also as a counterparty towards all the uh, synthetic trades, right? So that's Excellent. essentially a, a quick uh, uh, summary of how uh, what we do. Oh, okay, okay. Let's bring in Amit here. Uh, you know, and uh, Amit, just when I'm talking to you here, uh, I just would like to know, on a macro level. How does liquid staking improve the uh, the growth of proof of stake over proof of work? Will it help you know diversify the amount of nodes out there that are validating this new consensus mechanism? Uh, so I think it's I think that uh, on this the jury is still uh, still out. I don't think it's a straightforward answer. Uh, what it definitely helps uh, the liquid state. Uh, Liquid staking helps in actually potentially decentralizing the network because when people self-stake or stake with a particular validator, they typically tend to uh, choose one of the top four or top five validators. Right? But uh, otherwise, if they actually choose to stake with a liquid staking protocol, the smart contract kind of uh, disperses the, st uh, the assets across multiple validators. So it kind of Ideally, it should help in decentralizing the network and dispersing the stake across several validators. So, yeah, in a way, it could help in decentralization and also uh, reducing the concentration of power among the top validators. Yeah, so that's I what it just... potentially could lead to. Yeah, okay, I would just. So add... Yeah, so when it comes when it comes to liquid staking, so liquid staking theoretically should help people stake because you have, the first question is why would someone not stake? Right. If someone's going to hold the token, the reason why they wouldn't want to stake it is because they want to be liquid or they plan on using it. So liquid staking should take care of that for them, because if they want to spend it, they can. 
But the second question, which is, does it help decentralization? The answer is, it depends. Because if you use a liquid staking solution that only gives it to one validator or like two validators, you're concentrating stake. So at a macro level, you're actually not helping central, you're, you're actually centralizing. So, um, I mean, for us, our ethos is decentralization, which is why I'm so passionate about what I'm saying. Because like for us, we split out like 450 different validators, but there's other liquid staking solutions, which they only give it to like 22 or whatever, a handful of different validators. And so that creates its own uh, problems. Uh, as right. Well. I, I see. So in your kind of, uh, the way you have worked out the governance of your protocol is that you are prioritizing decentralization. Yes, exactly. Because the thing is, it's one of those, like uh, the free rider problem where if everyone like picks up litter, but one guy just keeps throwing it. Like, yes, every per every person can be individually selfish, but someone has to be looking out for the long-term health of the community. And so that's why I think most chains are realizing and that they want to move towards decentralization, which is why, you know, the whole thing with Lido and everything that's on Ethereum, because they have like 80 something percent of all staked ETH is with Lido right now or something like that. So, yeah. Okay, uh, Torb, you guys are concentrating exclusively with Solana or is that wrong? Yes, we're currently just focusing on one thing. Um, I always say, you know, when a place says they have the best burgers and the best ice cream, they usually don't have either because it's hard enough just to be the best at one thing. And so for us, we're just focusing on Solana, um, although we haven't closed the doors to anything else, but that's currently what our focus is. Okay, so you may move into uh, Ethereum staking whenever that comes big after Vitalik's big announce announcement about proof of stake coming in August. And um, actually, I'd like to ask you as well, do you think this is a definitive announcement? Do you think it's going to happen this August, the merge? Uh, I don't know. You know, they say uh, product plans and God laughs. So it's hard to say, you know, <laughs> when they give a timeline where they're going to be able to stick to it. But I hope so. I think it's good for the ecosystem as a whole. Like, I think crypto as a whole, um, I'm not one of those like Solana is better than everything or whatever, because at the end of the day, we're so early that we should, it's kind of like a bunch of teams and like the NFL, like, we should be rooting for the NFL, even if it's not our team, because it's just good for the brand. So that's the kind of way I look at it. That's great. Yeah, no, there's a lot of use cases. Everybody's kind of moving at their own individual goals, but we're all kind of lifting this ecosystem up together. I really like that. Now, can we move to Kelvin? Kelvin, can you describe, mm -hmm. uh, do you go for the, sorry, yeah, Kelvin, do you go for those big hitters like uh, Ethereum? Can we do liquid staking with Ethereum? And what do you think about Vitalik's announcement? That there's going to be the merge happening this August. I mean, like Tarp just said, right? I mean, in terms of the announcement, I mean, it's good for the ecosystem overall, right? I mean, you know, I mean, moving from proof of work to proof of stake, right? But then, of course, right? I mean, we're uh, pushing on new product, but there's always, you know, uh, timeline. Sometimes uh, there's delays and things like that, right? But I think in general, overall, I mean, I'm sure the team is working really hard uh, to get that done. So uh, I think everyone's exciting, uh, excited, right? Uh, looking forward uh, for that to happen, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, if the merge does happen this August, do you think there's going to be a, like a massive sort of a, a, a big increase in the amount of liquid staking happening just because you've got like, you know, the whole Ethereum community uh, looking to stake their, uh, their ETH? I would think so, right? I mean, think about, I mean, I think market cap right now for Ethereum was like $240 billion, uh, right? So then there's a lot of, you know, uh, 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 that's not a small amount, right? I mean, look at, you know, uh, uh, what liquid staking can do, right? Essentially, you know, allows you to stake, right? As you get reward Sorry, at the same just time. In. Yeah, so I mean, you know, with liquid staking, right? I mean, you know, you can get the reward at the same time still being liquid, right? I, I don't see why people will not stake, right? Like what Torb to say, right? So I think, you know, that will actually unleash a huge amount of capital, right? actually going to DeFi, right? And that will actually benefit other protocols as well. Uh, and, you know, I think the question next is really, you know, who will be connecting the dots, right? With you no know, liquid staking tokens, right? How do you utilize it in other DeFi products? Right? And that will be, you know, uh, uh, that will be a huge uh, next step, right? For uh, the, the whole community as a whole, right? You know, how do you connect the dots, the little different building blocks, right? And put them together, right? So that's how I see it. So it looks like we lost Brian, uh, but I would say that, uh, well, I mean, did you have anything to add to that? So obviously I think he asked me and Calvin the same question. So kind of about your thoughts about the merge. No, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of second your uh, opinion. The faster the merge happens, it just grows the proof of stake market uh, multifold, right? I think it's good for the ecosystem for sure.
and a lot of people would be comfortable staking their ETH knowing that they can always withdraw it. Yeah, I mean, I guess that was one of the issues, right? Uh, <laughs> kind of that they ran into when the market nuked with the whole Terra thing is that um, ST ETH, well, ETH was trading at a premium to ST ETH. And so what that did is it, uh, there was like this fear of a catastrophic liquidation that would go and create this ridiculous red candle. And just, yeah. and so I think that is something that if you're, so nothing comes without free of being free of cost. And obviously when you're doing proof of stake, there is some, uh, there's more uh, attack vector points. And so that is something that I think as a community, like whether, whatever chain it is, like proof of stake, we have to think about that. Like we don't want to create a situation where it's, uh, you know, we have to roll back the chain or have to do a fork or something like that, which was a legitimate fear when STE was depegging from ETH so aggressively. Tor, I just caught the end of that. You can hear me, yeah? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my battery ran up there. So uh, I think I just came back in and were people sort of talking about the risks of proof of stake over proof of work? Yeah, I was talking about like uh, answering your question about like the merge coming. And I, I was just mentioning that proof of stake is, I, I believe, is a better option. I think proof of work is good for Bitcoin. So I'm not saying proof of work is bad. I'm just saying for what Bitcoin is trying to achieve, it's great. But I think for what a lot of layer ones are trying to achieve, proof of stake makes more sense. And obviously, Vitalik agrees with me, which is why he's going to proof of stake. So uh, I think I'm in good company there. But my only point was that there is risk that comes with proof of stake and concentrated stake. And there, you just have to mitigate it and, and be aware of it. That's that's just my, what my point was. Great, great. Uh, can I bring in Amit there? Amit, could you sort of give your own opinion on proof of stake and the risks on people saying that it's maybe not as secure as uh, the proof of work method? No, I actually think, I mean, I kind of second, I was just saying that I second uh, uh, Torab's as well as uh, uh, Kelvin's point of view. Uh, I think proof of stake is great uh, because there are several innovations that could be built on top of proof of stake, like Solana has built a proof of history and several other blockchains have built depots and there are roll-ups that are coming up, right? I think proof of stake is great for what it is trying to solve for. Uh, really the smart contracts and potentially the really high velocity transactions, right? Without that, I don't think these are possible in the in, in case of proof of work. Bitcoin probably solves for the uh, problem of store of value or a hedge against inflation or potentially hedge against uh, dollar. So that proof of work solves for that particular use case. But for a typical smart contract related use case, I think proof of stake suits better. That's a really good way of putting it. Yeah. So, would you would you be a proponent of Bitcoin being kind of like the world's reserve asset? <laughs> I think. Uh, I mean, I would love to see that being one of the one of the important reserve assets for many countries. But yeah, I do, I, I don't know if if I want Bitcoin to replace dollar as a reserve currency. But we only have a few minutes left now. Can we, uh, actually, a few seconds left. Can we bring in Kelvin? Kelvin, can you just wrap it up with uh, your own views on proof of stake? The, the whole argument between proof of stake and proof of work. How do you think it? You know, do you think there's going to be forks and different things like that and breaches of security? I think it really depends, right? Like Torb said, right? I mean, there are different you no know, chains, you no know, different uh, uh, different protocols. I mean, they try to achieve different things, right? So then, I mean. It's, some would prefer going proof of work and some would prefer going proof of stake. Right? I think it really depends, right? I mean, there's no right answer for all, right? So it really depends on what you're trying to achieve and there's always pros and cons, right? Uh, that's how I would put it. That's really good. Well, here, guys, look, thank you very, very much. Thanks to uh, uh, everyone. Thanks to uh, Amit. Thanks to Kelvin. Thanks to Tabar. I got your name right there, Tabar. You just jump in there if I got that wrong. No, it's fine. Oh, okay, guys. Yeah, it's terrible. Oh, sorry. Okay. Now, thank you very much. That was really engaging. We only have half an hour. I just want to talk more about liquid staking. I knew very little about it. Now I know a little bit more. Now I'm thinking to myself, that's actually going to come really valuable whenever the ETH merge happens in August. And I think it's got a lot of potential. But guys, thanks a million for you know taking the time out to agree to turn up at this panel. And uh, yeah, thank you. My name is Brian McLean from Yahoo Finance. And it's been a pleasure talking to you, you three today. Thanks, guys. Thank you. How are we going, Brian? Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Brian. Thank you.